Hello again, friends. And you are our friends, the great Brian Last here. You there, we are here with a YouTube exclusive. Of course, we said that we are taking a couple weeks off. We have a couple omnibus collections. We have a brand new drive through next week. And we said we would only be doing special reports if anyone did anything stupid in the world of professional wrestling. Well, it took a day, and it has happened. Not even a day! And of course, here he is, the man who will be lending his insight to this inferno of a review, Mr. Jim Cornette. Explain, Brian Ladd, to the people, to the people, explain fully that, that not only did we say that unless someone does something incredibly stupid, magnificently ignorant, preposterously brainless, without a modicum, a minuscule amount of thought or, or, or in, in good intention, something on a, a biblical scale of wretchedness. And then we were going to do a, a broken news report on YouTube because it would be timely. But otherwise, we were going to have a nice little break with all of our things already taped up and planned. And it did not only did it not take a day, it actually happened, what, three hours, four hours maybe, after those words were, were emitted, uttered, propelled from our chicken lips. Well, you know, on Twitter, on Sunday, all throughout the day, people kept asking, are you guys going to review Tables, Ladders, and Chairs, TLC, the pay-per-view event by WWE? Will you be reviewing it? Will the drive through be delayed a day because of the review? And finally, no. finally, I had to say, we will not be reviewing this event. And people were writing all throughout the event, oh, this match was good. I really wish Jim would have talked about this. Jim would have liked this. And then the main event happened. And then all of a sudden, the correspondence we were receiving changed. It became the tone shifted a bit. The worm, <laughs> as they say, had turned. That's right. People are saying Jim will lose his mind if he watches this. I got to hear what he'll say. And here we are. We have listened to so the people. You, so you're trying to play this off on the demand of the people when in actual you called me. Brian left from your chicken lips, though as soon as I answered the phone, hello, thinking it's just going to be a personal call because we have a day off. You say, well, somebody did something stupid. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> you must admit, before we even talk about what you thought of this, you must admit that this is the level of stupid that warrants a breaking news report. A broken news report. Yeah, no, this is a broken news report. This news this news didn't break. It was already broken when people found out about it, when they saw it happen. It was already broken that this got by multiple people, multiple alleged brains. And and I'm I of course obviously we must blame part of this on the the creative, uh, I can't say, call, call them comedy writers now. Usually it's the comedy writers, the creative geniuses that come from the major universities with a background in television. Uh, they want to do the comedy, but now they've branched out into fucking horror movies. And they say, well, let's just fucking set people on fire. Um, not even, I mean, we've all set people on fire, but I've set somebody on fire. I've set a couple of people on fire, Bob Armstrong, Ronnie Garvin, but what well, is the actually, difference between throwing fire and no, setting someone to say, on to fire? Actually, well, see, and that was the stipulation, which, uh, of the Firefly <laughs> Funhouse Inferno match. Oh, I'd love to have heard Kevin Dunn talking about that one in a production meeting. The Firefly Funhouse Inferno match. The stipulation as as written, as announced by what the ring announcer, Mike Rome, he got his hair cut with a pencil sharpener. <laughs> Go back and look at him now. Anybody, I double dog, I triple dog dare you. Don't stick your tongue to a flagpole. Go back and look at this fucking schmo. On 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 the video, 
and tell me that somebody didn't stick his head and when he was in grade school, stick his head in a pencil sharpener and grind it, and he's kept that haircut ever since. Anyway, the stipulation was to light some part of your opponent on fire. And, and as I was saying, speaking from a segment of the population that has set other human beings on fire, that, that can happen. But how did they get total and complete immolation of a human being to a burnt crisp to Waffle House fucking uh, hash browns? How did that, we're going to actually kill, murder this guy, kill him, burn him. He was alive when they started. So burn him alive as the finish to this pay-per-view. This, of this once proud company that has been reduced to, and here's the, a lot of people are going to say, well, you got to cut a promo on your boy, Randy Orton. Here's the thing. Randy Orton. A, a, one the last star of their their great class besides Brock who uh, wrestles once a fucking every time Heyman gets laid Brock wrestles so <laughs> and well it's about the same amount of frequency and it, and and Cena's making movies, and fuck it, he's the last of the superstar level guys that and 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 the all around best in ring worker, psychology, athletically performing the moves, knowing what to do, be blah blah blah. He's two hundred fifty pounds. He's a grown man. People buy him as a badass. He was big back when it was harder to be big than it is now, or harder to be presented as a main eventer. It's it's a lot harder to be big now because nobody's doing it. But <sighs> he reminds me of remember when Nicolas Cage at one point had been in like the biggest box office bonanza movies in Hollywood and was a huge fucking star and somehow, well, not somehow, through spending all of his fucking money and more, got incredibly in debt to the IRS and was forced to do people's home fucking movies practically. This is what this felt like for Randy. And, and I, I, I'm Randy Orton is not a guy who is a, a, a sympathetic, a fuzzy, warm hearted guy when it comes to the traditions of the wrestling business. And I guarantee you that he, at this point is saying, I'm traveling to fewer places than ever in my career i'm working overall less than ever i'm taking fewer bumps than ever and they're still paying me seven figures a fucking year and they want me to do this shit <laughs> they're gonna pay me to do this shit <laughs> okay what the fuck because he is the viper right the other guy i'm not sure about bray wyatt i think he thinks this shit's good Cause that whole fucking puppet thing and the fucking fun house thing and the whole nine yards and the fact that they hit him with crowbars and wrecking balls and shove hand grenades up his ass and pull the pin. And he still comes back and this will be a good one. Now, you know, it, did they give him his notice? Are they finally done with the fiend is the, cause they burned him alive in front of God and everybody, including all the fans on the screen. So I'm wondering, is the, is that mean he's done? Did they give him his notice? Did they future endeavor him? Could, you know, they say the business was harder in the old days, Brian. But goddamn, in the old days, all they did was job you out and maybe fuck you on your last check. They burned this motherfucker alive to give him his notice. That's stiff. I, I don't believe they've given him notice, no. Well, how's he? what's he going to come back as a fucking crispy critter from Canyon Creek? What is it here? Wait a minute. Here comes a human piece of charcoal down the aisle. It's the fiend returning. A, so I, I think Orton did this maliciously for money. Like if you're stupid enough to get me to do this, your last fucking star, no wonder people are tuning out in droves. I'm still making all this money. Fuck you. I don't know. If, I don't know if, uh, 
his dad, uh, uh, Cowboy Bob, what he would have thought of this finish had they presented it to him. Of course, that wouldn't have happened back in those days. But the actual last actual star that they created from our big class in OVW, they're putting him in these ridiculous stipulation matches that make everybody either roll their eyes or laugh or they're blowing up on Twitter. Oh, look at this. This is fucking stupid. And is that the goal here to take your last star and put him in shit that people will purposely fucking laugh at and make fun of as, as a business goal? Is that a thing that you would want to do? Uh, and as I did, and somebody had to tell Vince, yeah, we're going to, can you imagine if one of us, whether it had been me or Bruce or fucking shit stain, it's yeah, we're going to actually set fire to fucking Sean, but I, you know, I could actually, I could have pitched that one. I could have, I could have given it at my all the big pitch. We're going to set fire to Sean and burn him alive at the end of raw. What the f- he would have drug tested us. You could have said that Kane did it. Even and, and somebody <laughs> saw well they were doing that before. Yeah, they set Kane's arm on fire once, right? Okay, yeah, and that's a fucking they do the gel and all the shit and everything. Well, that fit the fucking thing. They set his arm on fire. It's happened to people. But it didn't mean that they set his whole body on fire and burned him to a crisp. And not only that, but an obvious dummy. They show him laying there, show him laying there that when Randy throws the fucking match, it's a goddamn mannequin. It looked like a goddamn Three Stooges cartoon, but before they even broke away from Ted Healy for the old time movie comics in the audience. <laughs> But it was just a, they'd throw a fucking six ounce dummy, a plastic or a fucking styrofoam dummy off a roof dressed as somebody and it floats in the breeze and that's the body that's floating. It was obviously fake, obviously not re- remotely the same human being we had just seen there. <sighs> Which means Randy's, when you do something... And folks, the reason why I'm saying with your one of your last stars or your last star, why would you do this? Because when he's in on it, which he obviously was, it drags him down too. People don't then... It's all subliminal and it's also cumulative. Nobody's going to... Well, some people actually by, twi- by Twitter and things actually have said, fuck it, this is it for me. This is the straw that broke the camel's back. But these stupid things, any one of them may not mentally turn a longtime fan off to the star or to the business, but cumulatively they do. And generally the fans that are most disgusted remember the high points, May Young, you know, sharts of a fucking hand out her fucking twat. Uh, somebody gets burned alive in the middle of the fucking ring at the end of a pay-per-view, et cetera, all the goofy shit. And over time, even a star the level of Randy Orton, who has goodwill built up with the fans, uh, the way that they think of him, that he is a star on the level of, you know, maybe the, the Austins and the fucking, you know, upper level of the world certainly the Cena's and the Batista's and the blah 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 but then the more they see him in shit like this the more that that goes around that then when you bring up Randy Orton's name whether they say to somebody else oh yeah I saw that thing he was in or they just think to themselves yeah he was in that goofy thing where they set the fucking mannequin on fire and over a period of time the subliminal message that you are delivering to people when you put your stars in positions of doing stupid shit like that is more of the silly ha 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 you know yeah i got to that fucking thing and and less of the wow it was austin and rock and fucking cena and here came the big the good memories get lost because the good memories are how the guys got over and now they're having more b- bad memories of guys doing stupid shit with other people that ain't over or is implausible or is just goofy 
or they expect me to believe it would. By the way, did somebody tell me Ray Mysterio grew another fucking eyeball? Has this happened? Oh, I don't know. I thought he was wearing a mask with a eye patch over, not an eye patch, but covering several, over his eye. But I don't know. I saw several tweets here a few weeks ago to the effect of they they'd seen Ray Mysterio with a brand new eye. I don't. Maybe he got a glass eye. But to point at that shit. Loser at first, the winner has to take the loser's eyeball out. Well, fuck you. That could, that, yes, that could happen in a fucking bar fight, and yes, it's happened in wrestling, both unintentionally, Stan Hansen and Vader, and intentionally, about uh, uh, numerous times back in the old days when things got out of hand. Ron Fuller can tell you all about it on the Studcast. But you you can never advertise that as a stipulation and get anybody to do anything but roll their eyes. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> it's just fucking silly. And so these anyway, these writers just find their fucking uh, paychecks but coming up with this preposterous horse shit because they've never actually been in the ring or have any respect for wrestling, combined with the fact that now since there's no people in the building, they can just say, cut. It's what they've dreamed of. Instead of them getting into the wrestling business, they've made the wrestling business get into their fucking phony-ass TV business. I don't blame the writers. I blame Vince. Well, I, and I, I don't worry. There's some more blame to go around. That's why I said a minute ago. Can you imagine us saying that 25 years ago? Uh, let's set to go on fire or whatever. He would have drug te- tested us. Now somebody needs to give Vince one of those cognitive tests. Because this got by him, too. He. Th- Somehow they convinced him this was a good thing. Well, we've just thrown all pretense out the window, Vince. We'll just burn one of the top talents. And then maybe Vince had the same response I did. Was well, he still under contract? We'd like to use him more if he is. And then they'll say, well, we'll just... Well, but how are they going to resurrect him? Have they been watching the old Frankenstein movies? He got... He didn't even fall into the sulfur pit or the fucking glacier where he could be frozen in the ice. He was in the ring there on fire like a goddamn the last hot dog on the fucking grill that somebody forgot at the 4th of July picnic in front of everybody until motionless. He had to be motionless. It was a mannequin. You want to go over this thing? Some of the highlights of this thing? (laughs) Let's do that. Let me take a drink of Sprite Zero to wash some of the bile out of my mouth. Here's the thing, again, in an empty building, they've got the piped-in crowd cheering or booing or whatever from the start of the whole thing, from the entrances, and I understand the guys are, they still have the guys do entrances, even though there's no people there, they're milking for it. Randy... Did the, okay, UFC fucking, you know, psych up, all intense thing, which would work if it was, if it had in any way been a fight that he was advertised or scheduled to be involved in. But they made it silly right off the bat. Light part of your opponent on fire, blah, blah, blah. And in the fiend entrance with the blackout and the effects and the skull mask. Here's the thing. If all of his matches weren't so obviously phony and all the re- preposterous things that they run over him with that he doesn't sell and he has his head caved in and doesn't sell, and he d- if he didn't do all the segments, the promos with the puppets, it's so obviously phony and requires the cooperation of all of the opponents and et cetera to be going along with this thing. His entrance just standing alone would be cool. It's cool fucking mask. The big fat fuck in the fucking leather, the, the lights, the fucking lantern with the skull. The entrance is the, is my favorite part. I, he loses me on everything else. At, at the at the bell, they they just looked at each other like they're in this fight to the death. I timed it for a minute. They kind of circled around, and then Randy sucker punched him, and no sells it. And it, it took Randy like six minutes to get get in the ring. And well, yeah, that, that, <laughs> that's another thing. I think they're thinking. You know, Randy's thinking I'm getting paid for for this. The same thing, no matter how slow it is or how much I can avoid of the doing of this. But yeah, you're you're right. It was eternity before they got there and got started with anything. Uh, 
And then, okay, so they've got the fiend is not selling. You know, the fiend at this point reminds me, or as at this point early in the match, reminds me of when Lawler was booking Memphis and was stuck for a, he couldn't get Bockwinkle in, or he was stuck for a fucking heel. And it, there, Duke Myers in the territory. I got a horror mask. Put it the make it the Colossus of Death. And that's the way he'd work with him. It's a big fucking guy in a mask, probably padded, so he he's not selling the punches, and he's you know fucking physically overwhelming. And then, but that was that was Jerry Lawler stealing a house on one of fifty two Monday nights at the Mid South Coliseum. That's not a pay per view main event picture that you want to fucking see with your top guy beating up or trying to beat up this guy in a fucking horror movie outfit and he's not selling him and then when the fiend takes over the quick camera cuts in the fucking corner my god i was i was becoming physically ill you know we haven't even talked about that really specifically in a while but another reason beyond the really bad creative beyond the presentation beyond the commentators another reason why a lot of people have a difficult time watching their shows is the camera cuts, which are excessive is a nice way to put it. It's nonstop. It's on every move. It's, it's on every punch. They'll switch the camera. Well, they're try. I mean, it looks like the, the old fucking fight scenes in the fucking 66 Batman series where the, and, you know, they're in the heels lair. They've got the Dutch tilt where everything's a bit off fucking kilter. And then the fight starts, and the only thing they're missing is the goddamn pow and zowie sound effects written out on the screen because they're... Uh, it's, uh, <laughs> Some of these guys need smoke and mirrors. Some of them don't. But either the quick camera cuts when there's action to make it frenetic or just the overall, the overly obviously rehearsed and staged camera shots where they're just perfect every time where you see what you're not supposed to see before you it, it, it this they've stripped any fucking spontaneity out of this anyway um the fiend did a head palm shoot off and randy orton went with it and ran back into a fucking headbutt i was like god damn rip rogers would have cussed randy orton like a fucking redheaded stepchild for that if he'd have done that in class i was wondering why the fiend was dressed like a biker doink but i found out later on in the finish <laughs> um go back and look a biker he, doink. he looked like fucking doink joined the goddamn sons of anarchy um orton was wearing a track suit but but see that's another thing the visual here's a guy dressed like a, a biker doink or a horror movie fucking creation of jerry lawler's in memphis on a monday night against a big star for the past 20 years who's in the ring wearing a track suit and visually is this a wwe pay-per-view main event and it looked like a a training match or a, a training match on Orton's part and an outlaw match on Fiend's part. And of course, is it what Orton's wearing a thing because, because there's fire everywhere. Well, yeah, guess what? He probably said, I'm not going out there and what I normally fucking wear when I have to do these spots this close to this fucking fire. Uh, anyway, Fiend was then turned the fucking fire on by the way. Um, were we supposed to think that he was controlling the fire mentally or that there was someone there who, whenever anything happened, boosted the flames? I'd well, and then somebody else, by the way, fuck you before you even say this. Well, Kane did it with an undertaker to his pyro. Yeah. On your entrance, when you're a big star on a television program and you make a motion, I can believe they'll blow the fucking pyro off for you. Right. And it stretched credulity when they start being able to do it on the unplanned run-ins, but when one of the participants in the match has obviously fucking paid off the goddamn pyro guy to be in his pocket and help him in his fight during the match by blowing the other guy or setting him on fire, for, you know, what the fuck? Uh, it, it, it. And then it just started going off just to, it was almost like Vince was back there, like his fucking, 
he he's so he's like one to juice it up right like he's got his like a junkie with his finger on the morphine drip he's saying yeah hit the flames again hit the flames again that makes it more exciting and that that fake crowd noise pumped in the whole match yes just incessant and and did you the fiend gets the leather strap from under the ring and whips randy orton with it and then throws that strap down and then reaches under, gets another strap that he pulls up and you can see the flame gels on it. It's the flammable stuff they use for in the Hollywood for this type of thing. And he lights it on fire. He's, he's holding it out and he's going to whip Randy with it, but Randy moves. So then the fiend swings at him and misses with an ax. They expect us to believe that he was going to hit him with the fucking axe full force. And by the way, and there's no referee in this thing. You, no wonder that they're hemorrhaging viewers include. Now they're down to the people that have been with them for a while and diehard WWE fans. And they're losing those people now because this doesn't even resemble what the fuck that they were doing or supposed to be doing. And like I said, putting Orton in this just devalues him for the smaller and smaller audience that when fiend pours the gasoline on a rocking chair, sets Orton in the rocking chair and tries to set him on fire. But Randy wakes up just in time. But then the announcer said that made Randy snap. And he actually made fiend sell by beating him with a fucking, a, 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 the same size chain you use for a Tennessee chain match. He wraps it around his fist and I would have broken his fist too. We, 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 the, the old days, it was a little dog uh, choker chain. Was this the around announce- the time when the announcer started whispering? Yeah, well, yeah. Then they're doing the the hushed. It, it's not a golf announcing. It's the hushed funeral procession. Like fucking, and here comes Jackie with JFK Jr. And it's so fuck. And the announcers are dead. I mean, they're just flatter in a plate full of piss because they're calling this like it's actually plausible, which is obviously the job of wrestling announcers, but they're in a no win situation here because if you call, if, if you are an announcer who's calling this in any way plausible, that one of these motherfuckers is really going to get set on fire, you're fucking buried. There's so they've given them no way out. The faces of the fans in the Thunderdome weren't even reacting. They weren't moving. They weren't cheering. They weren't smiling. One guy in one of the close-ups when they were out on the on the fucking floor was given a double thumbs down, and suddenly, boom, some girl popped up in his place. But you couldn't even pay attention to the match that they were having with all the fire explosions and the fake crowd noise and the ridiculous stipulation you were fed to begin with and the rotten announcing because it was so preposterous and no referee. So it's not even in any semblance of a, and there's no way you could get involved in this. It was just two guys doing shit, maybe in Puerto Rico. They liked the fire in Puerto Rico or if Onita still had a company in Japan but it, you couldn't get into this as any kind of legitimate or even illegitimate conflict. This was a this was more than just a bastard child of wrestling. This was not even related to it. It was just a, they've lost the plot. And so finally, then Orton pushes Fiend into one of the fire trays, and and he catches on fire his specially prepared heavy leather jacket and six layers of leggings and the places where they put the stuff on he did and, and more power to him for doing that i don't want them set me on fire even if it's professionals doing it but then they sets him on fire and he runs into the ring so our orton can rko him while he's on fire we all know Except- what you're supposed to do is stop drop and roll yes well he didn't stop he ran and then he got dropped and then he just rolled over Rock and roll over. Who who was that? What album was that? I don't know. Rock and roll over. Was that Kiss? I don't know. I can't remember. Well, (laughs) one of the brilliant musicians out in the audience is going to tell me. But anyway, and so, and Fiend sold that, believe it or not. So, boom. So, Randy wins. He set the guy on fire. Orton's distraught. 
and then goes out and gets a gas can and pours it all over the fiend. And one of the announcers says, what's Randy going to do? What the fuck do you think he's going to do at this point? He's pouring gasoline on this motherfucker. Nobody comes out. The cameramen keep shooting. No, wherever the announcers are, are hidden in the in the uh, the Thunderdome, there they're they're not trying to do anything. There's no official of any kind. And <laughs> oh, and Orton gets the gas can, pours it over him. He goes out, and there's a box of brand new long stemmed matches sitting carefully placed on the railing. Everybody knows that one of the standard pieces of equipment for a wrestling shoot is a box of brand new long stem matches sitting carefully placed on the barricade where the, the keeps the ringside area away from the fans who aren't present. And then he lights him on fire. And the fake explosions went crazy. In the classic days of professional wrestling, there was so much that promoters hid from the fire marshal. <laughs> but this has taken things to a whole nother level. <laughs> How many death threats do you think Orton's going to get for this? Zero. Of course. I, I say this all the time that the more you see something, the more that something is prostituted, the more that something is made to mean less or the people are numb to the reaction or whatever the case the, the the overall the less it means you lose another tool in your toolkit and this is a classic example i threw a fireball and to this day people most people still don't know how that was done and i'm not going to reveal the fucking secret here because you can go back and watch it on youtube or whatever boy people have loved it for years one of the great fireballs but i throw the fireball in ronnie garvin's face he fucking goes down, boom, his face smolders for about 15 seconds. The place is a scene of chaos. His brother turns babyface to fucking help save him. They take him to the hospital. They're worried about his eyesight. It legitimately did burn all of his eyebrows and fucking a couple layers of his cheeks and forehead off. They just say on television, my God... He's Cornette set Ronnie Garvin's face on fire. Here's the tape. Boom. They play it. I get multiple death threats. I printed some of them in the Midnight Express book. I've got some of them hanging on the wall here in the office. People went berserk. Like I legitimately had attempted murder on this fucking guy and tried to end his career. And he was out for what they keep him out for two weeks. Maybe I can't remember. And he comes back and the people and, and in multiple places paid, especially in Charlotte, we drew, what was it? Over 7,000 people to see me versus him just so he could beat me up. Nobody was laughing about that. It wasn't humorous to anybody. It drew money for fucking months with Garvin and Wyndham against the midnight and me and Ronnie and, Jimmy Garvin uh, uh, joining the fucking fray and the Garvin brothers. This is well. This was stupid. Their own fans that watched the shows made fun of it. And if if people do remember it in a month or two, which I doubt, the company probably should be ashamed of themselves that they, that they did it to begin with. And people remember it after that time, they, they should be hoping that people forget about it. I don't know what the fuck has happened with Vince. I don't, I, 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 I guess Bruce has just rolled over and said, fuck it. I'm just going to fucking, you know, let, let them do whatever and pitch it to Vince. Cause that's my job. Cause basically he takes whatever I would assume that they come up with. And he's just the one that has to sell it to Vince. Cause he's the only one that Vince will listen to. Cause as we've mentioned before, Vince thinks that Bruce gets it and it is whatever Vince wants. I don't fucking know. It's been every match we've seen Bray Wyatt in this year. There was the Firefly Funhouse match at WrestleMania with Cena. There was the, I don't even remember what the name of it was, the Swamp match with 
Braun Strowman were... I think it was the Swamp Match. Here's the problem. They do so much of the stupid stuff. I don't even remember now. Who drowned? One of them drowned in that match, and I don't remember which one um, it was. <laughs> you know... Remember what it ended where the water turned yes. red and yeah, who was it? Which one of them was it? It had to be it had to be Strowman because how could Bray Wyatt you lose his own swamp match? Why he'll never be allowed back in the swamp again? Why and and Ernest T. Bass is the head of the swamp committee down there. He wouldn't let him back in the swamp if he lost a swamp match. Well, I have another question about uh, wrestling. That was my gimmick for Billy Black and Smoky Mountain Wrestling. If he just stuck around long enough, he was a fucking swamp bastard with a fucking burlap sack of who knows what over his fucking shoulder and he fit the part that south georgia fucking hillbilly looking fucking talking son of a gun and he wouldn't stick with it but he went on to have a long and successful career oh shit (laughs) anyway well i want to ask you a follow-up question but first let me just give you this brief report about what happened after the event This is from the Wrestling Observer website by Brian Rose about last night's Monday Night Raw. Orton came out on tonight's Raw and explained that he liked what he did the previous night. He said that a normal man would have regrets over setting a man on fire, but The Fiend was not a man, and Orton was not normal. After Orton declared that The Fiend was no more, the lights went out. Oh, boy. In a manner similar to when The Fiend appears ringside, Instead, it was Alexa Bliss swinging on a swing set inside the ring. Oh, no. She (laughs) just... Oh, no. What? This is why I don't watch. She joked that the fiend could be at the beach as he looked a little pale, or he could be at his favorite restaurant eating barbecue. The end of the segment had Bliss warn Orton that if the fiend did come back, he would be unlike anything he had ever seen before. So now they got Alexa Bliss talking for the Fiend. Is this what you're saying to me? Well, I think there had been some involvement for a little while, but we haven't been watching the show. But I didn't know about the lights going out and coming back on, and there's a swing set in the middle of the ring. (laughs) That's new to me. That's new to me. You know... I don't, sometimes it's a tantalizing proposition to think what I could verbally do to a fucking garbage show like that, but I'd have to watch it to completely rip it apart. Do you think the authorities have dropped the ball not apprehending Randy Orton for murder? Well, now here's the thing. Do, do they have evidence? Because, as we clearly saw on the telecast, he didn't set fire to a real person. He set fire to a phony looking fucking mannequin. So I don't think there's a, so a lot of people have said this, should he be apprehended? Should it, you know, should the authorities be called? But I say no, because the evidence is so flimsy against him. Cause all he has to do is point and say, look, that looks faker than a football bat. And they'd have to go, well, you're right. That's pretty fucking fake. Is this the new trend in wrestling, though? We know that Impact Wrestling did a big murder mystery. Between this and whatever happened in the swamp that we can't exactly recall. Remember that, and they said that Lucha Underground was a trailblazer in this type of fucking horse fuckery. uh, Because they were killing people and and resurrecting them and, and all kinds of bringing them back to life and then killing them again over and over again. They were doing that a few years ago because of the, you know, the fucking, they were right there in Hollywood with all the TV writers. They were ahead of the curve on this. Now all the, all the wrestling writers want to catch up on it. So everybody's impact, uh, shot to groom, uh, WWE burnt the fiend, uh, Eric Clapton did not shoot the sheriff, but he he did shoot the deputy. Well, Bob, or no, Mar- he well, Bob Marley sheriff, did it first. Shoot the, well, that's true. Bob Marley shot the sheriff, but he didn't shoot the deputy. And then Eric Clapton tried to take credit for it. I don't know if there were any convictions. Does Matt Hardy's drowning in the football field match count, even though he came right back to life as a different person? No, his career had been dead long before that. <laughs> um... So I guess, yeah, so now, you know, it, it's like, fuck, it's a dangerous profession. You can be murdered at any point. Would You know what? Shawn Michaels would call this an unsafe work environment. 
Can you imagine? It just because fucking Brett beat him up. He it, it didn't even get a chance to beat him up just because Brett roughed him up. He said it was an unsafe work environment. Imagine if he was subject to being murdered whenever he came to work. Why, he would have been fucking just all upset. Jesus Christ. Well, like we said at the top, we promised if anyone did anything stupid, we would have an update. And here it is. This will continue now for the next couple of weeks. If anyone does anything extraordinarily stupid. Don't keep saying that. Which we'll unfortunately happens quite frequently in the world of professional we, wrestling. We will never have a break if you keep saying that. Or we're going to have to raise the level of stupidity, the, the, the level of the stupidity bar. I think it's as far as it can go right now. It has to be stupider than this. Whatever somebody does has to be stupider than this. Let's give ourselves some fighting chance to not have to do this constantly. Well, we will see what happens, but until next time, reminder, Omnibus Collections, this week and next week for the Jim Cornette Experience, a brand new drive through next Monday, wherever you find your favorite podcasts. And of course, we're back with all new, fresh programming in the new year. But until next time, for Jim Cornette, I'm the great Brian Last. Tally-ho!